So one of the most common questions I get is how does a sump work and why doesn't it flood? Um, and it's kind of hard to explain if you're not sitting in front of a tank. So let's give this a shot. In the sump, you've got a certain water level right now. Now the pump is running. So if I unplug the pump, the water level is going to go up about an inch or two. This is common. Um, now I could have a lot more water in this sump, but you see I've got it marked right there. So I know exactly what the water level is at a maximum while the pump is running so that I have enough room in this sump to let water from the display tanks down because you're always going to get some coming down without going over this wall. Now this wall is a really good feature that I put on all my sumps and that's a crate with a removal removable piece of plastic mesh in there between the pieces of egg crate. So I can take that mesh out and clean it if I need to, but that keeps the macroalgae out of the pump section. That is why I can't go above that water level. I can't let the water go above here if the water if the pump's off because I'll end up with macroalgae getting into the pump section. So when you first set up a sump, fill up the display all the way until it's overflowing into the sump. Then fill up the sump to your, the max level that you want it to ever be at. So in this tank, it's gonna be at the top of that black mesh in that mesh wall. Then turn the pump on. The water level is gonna drop an inch or two or three or however much it drops. Mark that on the sump and that's your maximum operating level. That's the maximum water level that water can ever be on with the pump on. So the pump pumps water up into the displays. The water in the displays will go up until it goes into the overflows. Those drain all, all of them drain down in to the sump again. So the water level in the displays will only go up a little bit in each one of them and then down the overflows. It's pretty simple um, to get running once it's balanced. Now the issues come when things go wrong. So what can go wrong? Well, something can clog the drain. So it's always good, at least if you have space for it, to have multiple drains on a tank. These 10 gallons only have one drain. The 40 breeder at the top has two. So if either one of these drains clogged up, whether it's a sheet of algae goes over it, or algae's growing on it when it shouldn't be, the other one can make up for it. And you'll see a, uh, the water level in the tank rise, and you'll know to clean it. Um, another issue is these returns, they're full of water. So if the pump goes off, they're going to siphon water back down to the sump. That's pretty easy to um, make up for. In this case, you've got the return barely below the water line. So the second that water level starts to drop, you're going to get air in that return. It's going to break that siphon. On this one, we've got a return line for a tank that is not drilled, and you'll see there's a little tiny hole in here that's letting water out. That is going to break the siphon the second the pump goes off. You're going to get air in there, you're going to hear it gurgle, and the siphon's going to stop instantly. Same thing on the 300 gallon with the pre-drilled overflows is just inside the overflow here, that little current, that little jet of water is coming out of the return. That's to let air in to break that siphon. These are pretty close to the top, but this is also a 300 gallon tank. That's six by three feet. That's 18 square feet of water surface area. So those are only about an inch below, but that's a lot of water to siphon down before it would break on the returns. So that's why you've got that little siphon break there. The other uh, thing that I have had happen is on the overflow box, the YouTube loses siphon. So if the pump goes off, the flow stops, it should just sit there with water on each side keeping the siphon. But if this tube is too short at the bottom, on either side, it'll let air in and then it'll break your siphon. And then when the water and the, the pump comes on again, you're not gonna have anywhere for the water to go because you lost the siphon already. So those are the biggest issues that I've seen with um, sumps flooding. Now the other common one is people simply overfilling the system. So let's say they forget that they need to keep the water level so low while the pump is on and they either top off or do a water change and fill up way too much. And <clears throat> instead of being 
down here where it is now, they fill it up to here. Well, it looks fine, and it will be fine for now until that pump goes off. And then you had room for all the water from the displays to come down, except now you don't because you filled up half of it. So then once that pump is off, the displays finish draining, and you flooded the sump. So if you follow these basic rules of having a siphon break on the returns and using the low water level and, and getting that measured properly and just making sure that nothing clogs your drains, you should never have any issues.